Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. I hope you had a great holiday and well rested and ready to go for 2022. I am rested. I've had almost a three week holiday, which I will probably make another video and share with you. But today I wanna to talk about the five differences in traveling over the summer holidays in New Zealand compared to the US. Five differences that I really wanna highlight that it's all fresh in my mind. So here we go. Okay, number one, the difference that we need to talk about first is the length of the summer holiday. So when we're talking about summer holiday, we're talking obviously about when children are out of school. It's not like when you go back to work, like you get summer holiday anymore, right? We all remember those days where you like have to go to work and become an adult and you're like, what do you mean I don't get summer holiday? Yeah, it's not cool. Anyway, the length. In New Zealand, you get a six weeks summer holiday for the children, and in the US, it's three months. And they all di are different times of the year. So like in New Zealand, uh, because we're on the you know, other side of the earth, <laughs> is uh, December through February, and in the US, it's June through August, okay? And so what's interesting though, it's really weird going from Christmas to summer holiday. Uh, whereas, you know, like in the US, it's like the end of the school season is in May, June timeframe, and then they go into their summer holiday. And it doesn't really evolve around a holiday in particular. We, they do go through, um, you know, 4th of July in July and uh, Memorial Day, Labor Day in the US as well during that time. So number one is just need to acknowledge that the length is quite different. And what do I think about this? Well, honestly, living in both of both places i think that the six weeks is what i would prefer it just gets to be too long with three months i think a lot of learning is lost in the children and i think that when i think about my summer holidays in the u.s like you know you're running you're so excited and you're doing stuff and it pretty much lasts about six weeks and then all the rest is like you're just trying to find a place for your kids to go while you go back to work or um, trying to entertain them while they're home with what feels like forever. So I know a lot of people have said this to me before as well. Like they feel like the three months is really long and really not necessary anymore because it was essentially established, you know, um, when we were more focused on farming and when before we've had, you know, innovations, let's say. So yeah, the three months feels really long. So overall, I think I'd prefer the six weeks. Number two difference is that it's actually, I know that we're talking about in terms of school holidays, but it's not actually for just kids in New Zealand. And that was one of the biggest eye openers when I moved here was that businesses literally close or you're forced to take leave during that time. It's crazy. Like when we came here, like we don't have any family here. And so we weren't going to take any holiday uh, you know, when uh, over Christmas or whatever, we were gonna do it at a different time. And they were like, that nah, we're closed. You can't come into work, doesn't work that way. Uh, and that it's not every business, obviously not every business closes, but like a lot of them will close like literally for a whole month here. And like, that's normal and expected. And in fact, I think in a lot of industries, you're expected to at least take two weeks over this particular holiday. Like it's just, it's slower. They just know that business is slower. Things are slowing down. And what's cool about New Zealand is that they are okay with that time frame of being inefficient or maybe not getting as much business or even being completely closed. Like I go through, like if you go into like a downtown somewhere, you'll walk through like closed until February. Close, you know, and I'm like wondering like this little small business, like I don't know how they survive. Like this little dairy, for example, will be closed until February or fish and chip shop. And you're like, what? Like, how are you even surviving if you don't have like a whole month where you're not getting any business? So that is one of the things that are really different between New Zealand and the US that um, things actually shut down over the summer holiday and your whole family can actually take a whole vacation and it isn't a whole thing. And then plus, in addition to that, New Zealand holidays are so much longer. Like in the US, you get two weeks as you work with a company for five years, you get three weeks and you know, and this is a generalization. Obviously there's all different types of companies, but in general, it's, you don't take more than a week really. And so, yeah, in New Zealand though, a month is acceptable. Three weeks is acceptable. We just took a, just a little under three weeks, which felt really long and like a real break. 
and so that's what's so great about New Zealand is that you actually get like a really good break and it's okay and like you know it is definitely catching up when you get back to work and you know minor crises here and there as you would expect <laughs> but like not too crazy and everybody everybody's been on holiday and so it's just it's just a whole different feel and it isn't like you're feeling bad for taking off or um, feeling like oh I feel bad for taking a full two weeks no nah, there's none of that it's like it's like, oh, you should have taken longer. Oh, are you taking any more holiday? And it's just a whole different value system and a whole way of thinking about things differently in terms of holiday break. Okay, and number three, let's talk about what you actually do on summer holiday. Does it vary in the US compared to New Zealand? Let's talk about that. So I wouldn't say that it varies too much. Definitely the terms that we use to talk about things. So for example, New Zealanders, a lot, a lot of New Zealanders go to their batches, which would be like a cabin or a cottage or like a summer home. And most of them are not like uber fancy. They're just literally like a nice place on the beach um, that has kind of minimal stuff for you to kind of function and stay there. And you know, it doesn't require like a lot of maintenance and upkeep and it's really great and it's really nice. And so most Kiwis, somebody in the family will have a badge and they will take turns using it or going to it and that's very common. But also in the US, very common to go to a cabin or um, rent a cabin for a week on a lake or, you know, kind of the same thing. Also camping is big, I would say in both of them. And so I think both of them do um, camping. They both do long weekend getaways. So in New Zealand, there's a couple of public holidays that are uh, like during or right after the summer break. And so a lot of long weekends are spent doing that. So I think like really you do very similar things. Uh, what's cool about New Zealand is that you can do a beach holiday and a mountain holiday in the same one <laughs> because they're not that far apart. You can get to all different things. So we went to the South Island and we did a little beach, we did some camping, we did some mountains, we did some Airbnb, we did so many different things and you can because it's all within close proximity, whereas the US is just much bigger. So you're either gonna have a holiday on the beach or you're gonna have a holiday in the mountains and um, or you're just gonna go to a lake, okay? So yeah, you can't have like the full variety in your week to three weeks off uh, in the US compared to New Zealand. And number four, let's talk about camping. How does camping compare in New Zealand compared to the US? Because I have a lot to say on this. Because I camp a lot in the US. I've camped not as much in New Zealand because frankly, I don't like it as much here. Uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. I just spent uh, 10 days plus camping uh, in the South Island. So it's just really fresh in my mind, kind of the differences. So in the US, when you go camping, it's pretty standard that every campsite will have a, uh, a a fire pit where you can have a fire every night is pretty standard that you would have a picnic table that you know there's just certain standard things that doesn't necessarily happen in New Zealand and so that's a little bit frustrating like it's weird to me that you would get a campsite that has no picnic table or like nowhere to sit um, or you know and they have fire bands and you can't really have fires in New Zealand because it's dangerous and I'm not saying that they should I'm just saying it makes the camping experience very different. Because for us, like when you're camping in the US, the fire, the sitting around the fire, the s'mores around the fire, the fire time is kind of the highlight of camping. And so when you can't do that, it's not as great. But when I was camping in the South Island, like they had other options. So one of the campsites we stayed at had like a, like a pizza oven type thing that you were allowed to have fires in. It was just something you could sit around and you could make s'mores in there if you wanted. And so that was really great. So you could still do it uh, in this particular location. Also, another one that I stayed at had like set up like pits uh, on the beach. And so you could have bonfires on the beach, even better alternative. So like a bonfire on the beach is like better than like a campfire camping in the US. So they do have options. So if you are a camper and you love camping, or you're traveling to New Zealand, like there are campsites that you can do really cool things at. So you just need to do a little more research, but I also wouldn't assume that they're gonna have all the things that you're expecting uh, that they have in the US. Also, what's also very different about New Zealand is this communal kitchen. So most campsites or holiday parks will have a communal kitchen where everybody shares a couple of fridges, freezers, stoves, things you can cook on, it kind of, around five o'clock, you know, around lunchtime, everybody kind of comes in and starts making stuff. And that was really unusual. Like in the US, it's 
you kind of stay. I mean, there's been places where there's communal. I'm sure that there is. Like I'm talking about a very large country. But my experience camping has been like, you have your own campsite and it's very private. You don't, you know, you talk to some of your neighbors maybe, but it isn't like you're gonna be ever cooking together. And so that was always very different and very fun because you meet really cool people. And it's fun to look at what other people are cooking because you always need new ideas when you're cooking uh, camping, right? Because it's always like, how do I eat good without being a lot of work and whatever. And so that's really fun. Um, also, when you're tramping here in New Zealand, they have what are called huts are very common where sometimes you can reserve them, sometimes you can't. And you can go and there'll be like 30 bunks and then whoever's there just, you know, grabs a place to sleep and they share everything. And, and that's unusual. They do have those kinds of things in the US, but not as common. Like it's very common here to hike or backpack or tramp to a hut here in New, in New Zealand. And so that's really different. So yeah, the communal eating is very different. But also I just wanna highlight one more thing that's different about camping it is very expensive here in New Zealand. So I'm literally buying a slab of dirt. And sometimes I don't get anything with that slab of dirt. Like I don't even get like a picnic table or, you know, a fire pit or anything, but it's like 15 to $20 per adult. Plus each child is an additional like seven. It's not that much money, but when you add it up for my family of six plus, cause sometimes my kids bring friends, it's like $90 a night <laughs> to be at a campsite. Whereas in the U S it's, it's much cheaper than that. And you know, you don't always have to pay for the kids. I think you maybe pay per person. Gosh, I don't remember. It's been a while, but I don't remember it being you know, when things start to get to be like $90 a night for a slab of dirt, I'm considering an Airbnb at 120 at that point. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like what you're actually getting. And then some of them, I would say in general in New Zealand, the toilets are really nice. Like if you go to state parks and certain types of parks in the US, you're gonna get nice showers and toilets. But in New Zealand, I think they get the win, if you ask me, in terms of always providing public toilets. Like it could be, um, you know, just like a pit toilet, but they, they're pretty clean and it's pretty nice. And I think that they do a really good job here in providing that. And so that's also partly what you're paying for. Uh, so I was really happy with that in general with my travels because yeah, I always need to go. So yeah, but it is expensive. I just think traveling in general is expensive in New Zealand, but yeah. So camping, a little bit similar, a little bit different. So just know that if you're coming here. And number five, Okay, since I just kind of highlighted on the cost, I think that's what I'm gonna go with with number five. The cost to travel in New Zealand is very expensive. And I think that it gets very unaffordable for families. So the way that it's set up here in New Zealand, I think travel is set up for couples. So if you're a couple, you're fine. And then if you do have a family, they're kind of only set up for four. So like two adults, two kids. That's when you get the family deals at four. In addition to, if you have more than that, which I do, so there's six of us, we have to then pay for an additional two and it starts to become very unaffordable to do tours, um, to you know really do anything. Like a slab of dirt at a campground can be $90 for us. There is freedom camping options, but you have to have the right facilities in your camper van and then camper vans are expensive. So it's, it's kind of a whole thing. And so in general, I would say traveling with a family in New Zealand can be very unaffordable. So if you don't have family here who has a batch that you can borrow, I find it very expensive. And especially the tours, like for us, like to do really any tour can be anywhere between 500 to a thousand dollars just for like a three hour experience. And that's really outrageous and can be almost unaffordable for most families. And so I think what would be really great for New Zealand, if you're in the tourism, like there should be like a residential fee and then like the international fee. And I think that, I mean, all these people are struggling. And so I'm not saying, you know, you have to reduce your prices or whatever, but I'm just saying maybe if you had certain deals, um, for residents who live here because that's all that's traveling right now. It might make more sense and you might get more visitors. And so, yeah, it is just, I just think I just need to acknowledge that it is a very expensive to travel around here and especially for families. So I had Airbnb in one of my houses and I had it specifically low so families could travel and have somewhere to stay together. And then it's also, they have the issue with like, there's only four people allowed in the room and like, well, what do you do if you have two kids? Like I have, you know, a sleeping bag and an air mattress. And they're like, well, you know, and I try to be very upfront and honest about that always and try to negotiate a different rate and, 
you know, and most people are very reasonable here in New Zealand. If you just say, hey, we're actually a family of six. I know your house sleeps five, but you know, I have a very young kid who is happy to sleep on the floor. And then that's totally different. And they don't generally have a problem with that. But you know, it's just not set up and easy for like families to travel around. And so that's what I think really needs to change. And also, can I just say one more thing about the cost? The cost for teens. So once your kid is over 15, generally on a tour, it they have to pay the adult rate, which is can be like up to $200, right? And it's like, I don't think that that should be the case. I'm telling you, if you know teenagers, sometimes they get excited about things, but most things are like, mm, this is boring. Mm, I'm gonna go back on my phone. So it's very frustrating to parents have to pay adult rates when they're not really an adult mentality to really appreciate where they're at. Now, some teens are, some are mature. Um, but a lot of times they're not. They don't always want to do what the parents want to do. And so that can be frustrating. So I don't think that there should be, there should be, they should be still discounted <laughs> as a child because it's not like they're super engaged in that. So anyway, there's just, I have lots of ideas about how you can work that, but um, <clears throat> that's just my two cents on traveling with a family and a lot of teenagers. All right, I hope you enjoyed my YouTube video today. Please comment below and share what you did over the holidays or what are your thoughts on some of the things I said. Now, I know that I'm only limited to my experience and I haven't experienced everything, so please share your experiences. I'd love to hear it below. That would be great. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday and I will see you next week.